it's all because of flu stuff. When many of us think about prescription drugs, we think of our parents' blood pressure medication or grandmother's sleeping pills. But currently, all over the country, and especially in Florida, there's an epidemic of people addicted to prescription drugs, such as oxycodone. They started smoking it now, not just snorting it, not just injecting it, but now they're smoking. Anything that causes pain, back pain, cancer, fibromyalgia, there's gonna be a number of disease states um, where you would use, you could use oxycodone. In 2009, 1,185 individuals lost their lives to oxycodone in Florida alone. That equates to about seven Floridians dying every day. Now compare that figure to the street drugs, such as cocaine, which only claimed 529 lives, while heroin only claimed 95 that year. There are many different reasons why this crisis is happening, such as the proliferation of pain clinics and the fact that Florida has no prescription drug monitoring program. First off, we needed to find out how this drug can affect people, not only mentally or physically, but financially. After all, these drugs don't come cheap. When I started uh, uh, using them, the 40s would cost uh, $20 and the 80s would, 80s would cost 40 Some people would even spend up to $80, $90, $100 a pill, and so I'd spend you know, almost $150 you know, for the weekend, and then after that it just turned into just fifty dollars every day for about two or three years. They had spent maybe twenty thousand dollars of my parents' money. But when you become addicted to this medication, it can lead to obtaining money illegally. I got arrested for um, stealing my girlfriend's best friend's ring, and I'd also pawn my mother's wedding rings. When you get someone in treat treatment who's twenty years old, who's got eight felonies whether they be for robbery to get the drugs, or whether they be for possession or intent to sell. Um, their families are done, they're at the wit's end. But how is this little pill going to really affect you? In that medication, it's a C2 narcotic. There's both a, both a physical and a psychological dependence. They would experience euphoria. I, put the, I got sold to the American dream, you know, and all that bullshit propaganda on TV and commercials. And Chances are they would become, they could potentially become addicted to the drug if they were actually taking the medication. So their body would actually need to take that, um, otherwise they could experience signs of withdrawal. Body aches, chills, fever, um, discomfort, joint ache, muscle ache, nausea, vomiting, chills, and it's in general misery. And I started withdrawing and cold sweats that were almost as worse as when I quit cold turkey after using for three years. And although some people do get help and recover, there will always be those who don't. A few were overdoses. So their buddy was sitting there, and he's like, they're talking, he was talking about how, wow, I've never heard anybody snore that loud in my life. Well, that was because he's drowning in his own fluids in his lung from respiratory depression. One was um, drug deal gone bad, got shot. Um, one was a suicide because he was too scared to tell his family, and uh, the other one was the, the wreck from mixing alcohol and blues and nodding out. You know. I mean, it could lead up to a point to, you know, an extreme case scenario if, if you took like the extended release, you know, a high dose, an 80, an 80 milligram Oxycontin or something like that, you know. Uh, for somebody who's never taken any kind of opioids, maybe it could lead to respiratory depression, which is it's going to ultimately lead to death. Uh, and really, it's just a little bit of everything, you know. It's uh, it's 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 all because of blues. I would definitely say that each one was because of blues. So sure, the pills are dangerous, but who is it that is profiting from all the dangers? It's the doctors and the people that own these pain clinics, with some having criminal backgrounds. I had one gentleman walking around with a doctor's prescription pad who was openly, like, honest that he owned the place. He wasn't a doctor, but he actually owned the establishment. Now, due to loose laws, these pain clinics have been able to operate in Florida quite easily. Although, recent laws have put some regulations in place, but a lot of these clinics are still fully operational. Why are you driving 10 hours, 12 hours, come all the way down here? It's pretty clear to me why you are. 
and one of the biggies is people traveling from far away. But when people can make about a dollar per milligram in other states, it is evident why this is happening. It's like any other medicine. I can't, I don't really discriminate between filling. Mm -hmm. um, it bo it's going to definitely bother me if I, if I think they're not using for what they're going to be intended to use for. That bothers me. Because there are some doctors out there who are trying to do the right thing. But there is no question that there are doctors out there who are just making money off of killing people. Yeah, yeah there's, there's definitely problems with these guys. There's, there's without a doubt problems with pain management clinics. There's without a doubt an issue going on there. Sometimes you'll see a slew of patients all come in at the same time. Um, it's outrageous. The, the pain, you know, pain pill mills, the, it's outrageous. Um, I think they should be put in prison. And although some clinics have been shut down and some doctors have been arrested, Many are still thriving on the attics. So why Florida? Because Florida is the largest state without a prescription drug monitoring program. You know, it's a really, it's a really challenging situation for in the law right now because there's not a whole lot of laws to regulate the situation. And with Florida being the oxycodone capital of the nation to where it can be almost humorous, there's still legality issues. It's legal for somebody to go see a doctor. It's legal for that doctor to give them a prescription. It's legal for them to bring it to the pharmacy and get it filled. You know, it's all legal, right up until the point until the diversions. You know, there's two or three main people that would get the bottles and that was it, you know, and they would, uh, one of them went to Houston, Texas and stood out in front of a cancer place until the guy, someone came out and he asked, hey, can I buy a prescription? But just how would this program work? Well, it would stop people from getting three different prescriptions in one day. Um, it would stop people from other states coming in to the pain clinics to get the prescriptions. It would stop the abuse. It would put some controls on the access to prescription medications. So in order to prevent further drug diversion, Florida would need to install a prescription drug monitoring program and enforce it. Though the current governor isn't fully on board with having the program. But while the legal system works out its problems, many people struggle with addiction every day. You need to talk to your family first of all because, you know, fam family's where you started. You know, you grew up, and if you, you have a bad relationship with your family, and it's, then that's the way it is, call an aunt and uncle, call your godparent, call the person that, that is closest to you because there's always something, you're always going to have someone, you're, maybe it's your best friend, you get it out. Call anybody, you know, call any, call any facility, you don't have to call one particular, but just start the process by asking for help. I think once somebody asks for help, then things get a lot easier. Um, so ask your family, ask your friends, tell somebody that you've got a problem, tell somebody you need some help. Because the thing about these tiny blue pills, the thing that it really boils down to is... We need to get the word out, period, what's going on, because it's, it's, everybody's just, everybody hears about it, and everybody's seeing it on the news, everybody knows about it. Everybody, <laughs> Uh, but nobody, nobody's really stepping up, you know, the, the officers and stuff, they're, they're trying to get at places, but it's just, it's just not happening.